Hey guys, Matt here from Hardware Unboxed, and today I'm back to take a look at the brand new Overwatch game from Blizzard. Like most PC gamers, I'm a massive Blizzard fan, and I've been eyeing off Overwatch for some time. I had a pretty good go at the beta when that was out for a few days too, and that was a lot of fun. Overwatch strikes me as a new, better looking, deeper, and extremely polished version of Team Fortress 2. I did play TF2 a little back in the day, but not extensively, so I can't really make an in-depth comparison, but the playstyle and character roles definitely reminded me of it. One thing I instantly liked about Overwatch is that there's no pay to win BS, and actual character skills and attributes aren't improved simply by playing ridiculous hours. I find it super painful playing what are meant to be competitive online games using the pay to win or grind for better gear models. It's plain and simply an uneven battlefield and that takes away from both the experience and the satisfaction of winning, so cheers Blizzard for doing it this way. For those that don't really know what Overwatch is, in its most basic form it's two teams of six players fighting to control and win specially designed maps. There are 21 different heroes, each with extremely varied talents and abilities designed to play out certain roles in their teams. The weapons and special powers the heroes have are also varied, and even the mobility of each one is completely different. Being able to climb vertically in Overwatch is a valuable and actually quite uncommon commodity. Something I loved about the variety of heroes was that they often felt themed to gaming favourites of old. Flying and popping off rockets with Pharah was a flashback to Rocket Arena, the simplicity of Soldier 76 feels like standard COD, and running across walls with Lucio reminded me of the short time I played Titanfall. The art style is futuristic and a little cartoony, setting the scene for what's an often light-hearted but fiercely competitive contest. Maps are relatively simple and not overwhelmingly big, and experienced players can take advantage of choke points and high ground that new players will be completely unaware of. The best part of Overwatch is that to be truly successful, teamwork really is essential. Forget about playing on a COD server for hours without muttering a word and simply running around solo chasing frags. Teams that work together well and strategize will win in Overwatch, and I've got a feeling that's what's going to make it so addictive. From my time spent playing Overwatch, it appears to be one of the deepest competitive shooters created in a long time. With such an extensive selection of heroes to learn and a wealth of well thought out maps, players of all levels will have a lot to learn and will enjoy growing into and perhaps eventually mastering their favourite heroes. I couldn't find a lot of information on the game engine Overwatch employs, apart from the fact that it's a proprietary one created specifically for the game. As such, I've been really keen to start testing with our current generation cards, or is it last generation now? Either way, let's get into the results. All cards have been tested using the epic quality setting and I've tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4k. The Ilias control map was used for testing, both teams were loaded with AI control bots and the test ran for 3 minutes. An average of 3 runs was taken and I'll be reporting the minimum and average frame rates. Finally, the latest AMD and Nvidia drivers designed for Overwatch were used. For more information on the driver versions used and the full test system specs, please check the video description. <laughs> As you can see, with absolutely any of the cards in our test range, you're going to have an extremely smooth gaming experience in Overwatch with every setting maxed out. At the bottom of the table is the GTX 970, which was still able to render an average of 98 frames per second and a minimum of 88. As you can see, it only goes up from here, and the minimum and averages are consistently quite close together. Those using high refresh rate monitors will be able to tweak a couple of settings and be relatively happy with any of these cards, and those with the 980 Ti or above will be able to max everything out comfortably. Moving on to 1440p, gamers with the 970 or above will still be able to max every setting out and get a minimum of 55 frames per second or higher and expect an average of 65 FPS or higher. Again, the minimums and averages are extremely close together, which indicates to me this is a very well refined engine and game. Here the Fury X saw nearly 100 FPS on average, and the GTX 1080 led the way with 134 FPS. The i9 390 was solid as always, pulling 70 FPS of its own. Finally, we'll move on to the Big Daddy 4K resolution. Here a lot of our cards were finally challenged, and all but one fell below the magical 60 FPS mark. Though I wouldn't dare say that made it unplayable, because apparently that can really upset some people. Thankfully, all cards, including the 970 and i9 390, were able to pull over 30 FPS on average, so those that are happy to play at slightly lower frame rates will be able to do so at 4K, soaking up Overwatch in all of its epic quality glory. I'm really impressed by the way that Blizzard has been able to produce a game that in my opinion looks absolutely awesome and also runs so well on a variety of hardware. 
It shouldn't really come as a surprise, Blizzard are known for their excellent optimization and refinement as well as their refusal to rush a game release, and Overwatch is another shiny example of this. Also remember that all of these tests were conducted at the game's epic quality setting, meaning everything was completely maxed out. If you wanted to get a solid 60 FPS for example with a card that wasn't able to here, I dare say you could comfortably by lowering some of the quality settings. Overall, Overwatch is a very solid, refined, balanced and deep multiplayer experience from Blizzard that I have no doubt I'll be clocking some serious hours in. It's a really great blend of attractive visuals, well thought out map designs, engaging gameplay and a huge variety of playable characters that will keep you coming back for more and developing strategies at the water cooler with your teammates. I'm your host Matt as always and I'll catch you on the Blizzard server soon.